Well, just a tiny little Tolkien Christmas present from me. Do you know what's the relationship between, between one of the best known and best loved Christmas poems of all time? It was the night before Christmas and all through the house with one of Gerard Tolkien's earliest poems actually before his mythology was shaped. Well, let me tell you. Twas the Night Before Christmas is, of course, about the nightly visit of St Nicholas to leave presents for some children on Christmas Eve. And all of that is spied by their father who wakes up to witness his arrival. The poem is usually attributed to Clement Clark Moore here on the left, though the authorship is contested. Some scholars have argued that it was written by Henry Livingstone Jr. here on the right. And this is a fascinating area of research that I don't have time to go into right now. Now, the poem by Tolkien I have in mind is called Over Old Hills and Far Away. And it was written at some point between December 1915 and February 19, uh, 1916. So that Christmas period is sort of in between those dates. Um, this is one of only two poems about Tolkien's elusive uh, early character called Tingfang Warble. And he's variously described as a lepron, which is Tolkien's very idiosyncratic uh, spelling of leprechaun, uh, or he's a fae, or an elf, or a quaint spirit of mixed origin. King Fang Wobel also appears as a character in the Book of Lost Tales, which is the earliest draft of Tolkien's mythology, what we know today as the Silmarillion. Now, in the poem, in Over the Hills and Far Away, Tim Fang Warble is clearly a fairy creature akin to other such often small or even diminutive beings in Tolkien's early poems. He is described as a white-haired old elf who is nevertheless a merry piper, he is lithe and nimble, uh, he's running fervently and dancing, and eventually he's luring the speaker of the poem to follow his piping. So what is the connection? To begin with, the meter of the two poems connects them at once. They're both written in anapestic tetrameter, which is a rather unusual meter for the English language, which tends to like iambic compositions more. Um, and this fact alone makes anapestic meters very rhythmical, but also quite memorable. Uh, and that's perhaps one of the reasons why it was the night before Christmas is such a big success. So let's compare the stress syllables of the opening lines of each poem. So first, the uh, visit from St. Nicholas. It was the night before Christmas when all through the house, not a creature was staring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon, soon would be there. And I've exaggerated the stress really here so that you can hear it. And Tolkien's poem, it was early and still in the night of June, and few were the stars, and far was the moon, the drowsy trees drooping and silently creeping, shadows woke under them while they were sleeping. Now, apart from that same rhythm, the two openings of the two poems also seem to chime in other ways too. So in both of the first lines, we have an indication of time. Uh, the night before Christmas for um, a visit from St Nicholas and a night of June for Tolkien. And actually, Tolkien's first draft of the poem, uh, the opening life was even closer to a visit from St Nicholas because instead of it was, we have twas. It was a very quiet evening once in June. So the lexical um, um, comparison here is very, very close. Now, you could legitimately tell me that Tolkien's poem takes place in the summer, while the Christmas poem is emphatically set in snowy winter. However, Tolkien describes Tim Fang Warble's white hair as sparkling like frost in a winter moon. The moon in the Christmas poem, on the other hand, is also associated with bright light uh, because as it falls on the new fallen snow, it gives a lustre of midday to objects below. So sun and moon, summer and winter. You know, we have a number of sort of mixed metaphors here that are interesting. And there's more actually to compare. 
Our two protagonists, Sir Nicholas and Tim van Warbel, also show a number of similarities. And again, not only on the lexical level, but in terms of imagery. Uh, they're both small, little, even diminutive. Uh, Sir Nicholas is little and drives a miniature sleigh uh, driven by tiny reindeer, while Tim van Warbel has little feet and a slim little body, and also they both have the ability to leap high up the chimney for St. Nicholas, uh, up in the air for Tim van Warbel, and they both uh, laugh happily. Now, most importantly, both uh, St. Nicholas and Tim van Warbel are old, with white hair. Indeed, St. Nicholas is memorably described as a jolly old elf, while Tim van Warbel is the old elf. Um, and it was this last parallel, I think, alongside the sing-song meter of both poems that initially got me interested in this and, and, and I started sort of comparing the two poems. The narrators of the two poems also are quite similar. Uh, they both are woken at night, they hear something in their sleep, and they both approach the window to find out what's going on. And then we see both of them spying on their um, otherworldly visitors, although Tolkien's speaker goes a step further because he follows Ting Fang Warbel almost compulsively. Now, there's of course nothing intrinsically Christmassy about Tolkien's poem, uh, but there is most definitely something elvish about Moore's or Livingstone's poem. Um, a visit from St Nicholas was certainly as popular in Britain from the second half of the 19th century on uh, as it was on the other side of the Atlantic, and there were numerous illustrated editions that became very, very popular and very influential that actually shaped uh, the modern, now universal image of Santa Claus. Um, and the, the illustrated edition I keep on showing you here is the one I grew up as a child, illustrated by Douglas Gorsline. Um, and A Visit from St Nicholas is whimsical and it's jolly and it's not taking itself too seriously. Uh, it's a marked difference from the nostalgic and wistful tone of Tolkien's poem. But for me, the image of the tiny white-haired old elf that moves nimbly and draws the attention of the speaker and rousing him from his bed is a tantalizing link between the, link between the two poems, uh, underlined musically by their anapestic rhythms. As I'm sure you all know, of course, Tolkien did go on to create a Christmas mythology uh, parallel to his Middle Earth legendarium in his letters from Father Christmas and his central character, the British equivalent of St Nicholas or Santa Claus, is indeed whimsical and dressed in red and white, a tradition uh, that originated with early illustrations of the American figure as opposed to the usually green garments of early depictions of Father Christmas. But I like to think that Tim Fang Warble has something Christmassy about him too, if only some vague echo of the jolly old elf from A Visit from St Nicholas. Have a lovely Christmas.